Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to the second video in the restoration series for the Saber Breisgau 8 automatic. As I said at the end of the last video, the first thing I do is check the power supply, the power supply lines. In other words, I check whether the power that's being generated across the three filter caps that I replaced, which is really the B pluses. I tend to call them B1 plus, B2 plus and B3 plus. We need to check whether they are getting to where they're supposed to be getting. Now, you can check this in two ways. One way is you just plug this in, like we've done. We've already plugged it in, nothing blew up, the house is still standing, and there's been no smoke. So we could do that. We could uh, simply plug it in, set the, this thing on volts, and measure between ground, the chassis, and the various points where you should have some highish voltage. However, with the tubes out, obviously, this is with the tubes out. Now, obviously, if you know that a supply is going to the anode of a particular tube, you can check whether that's got the voltage there. There should be a high voltage there. What you won't see is what sort of resistance exists between that point and the source of that voltage. Because if there's no current draw, if it goes to the anode of a tube that's not there, it's basically just the voltage going through, but there's no current. So if there's a resistor in between, you will not measure that resistance. You won't know there's a resistor. You'll probably find exactly the same voltage at the end of where it's supposed to be as it is at the beginning, which is all fine and good. It tells you that that line has got continuity, but it doesn't tell you what the components are between the two points. It doesn't tell you specifically what the resistance is between the two points. And a lot of these B plus points on the tubes especially have got resistors between them and the source of that voltage. In other words, between them and B1+, plus, B2+, plus, or B3+. Plus. Okay? So I prefer to do it this way. I use an ohmmeter. I leave that thing completely off. There's no power to this. I use an ohmmeter and I start measuring continuity with the ohmmeter to the various points that the circuit tells me are supposed to be receiving B+. Plus. Okay? Let's look at the schematic and I'll show you exactly what I mean. If we take this point over here, which is B3+, plus, okay? Let's just zoom in on that a bit. Now, our B3 plus over here, we need to follow that line. It goes up here, goes to that knee over there, and then it moves to the left, and it goes up. Where does it go? It goes to pin 9 of the EL84. Now, there's no resistor between those two points. You should get just continuity. So, let's put the meter on that B3 plus. Remember, this thing is off, there's no power. And the tube socket for the um, EL84 is actually quite easily identifiable here. And here's pin 9. And we're getting 0.3 ohms. That means that's a short circuit. So that means I can go to my schematic now, and I can actually draw that line in. I can come here, let's get more on the screen. And I can draw that, I can paint that goes to there, that goes to there, and it goes to there. So that line has been painted in. Now we go back to here. Where does it go from here? Well, it goes along here. You can see that. There, there, there. There, there, there. Ah, there's a deviation point. Where does that go to? Well, that goes up here, and it can find a switch on or off. But if it doesn't go through that switch, remember we're talking about DC voltages, it goes along here and it meets a 3K resistor. And where does it go then? It can't go down, that's a capacitor blocking it, so it can go up, because this is a coil. So it can go up here, up here, up here, up here, it goes around that capacitor effectively, and we'll keep going, and it goes up here, and it goes through that coil around that capacitor. Now we're up here and it goes to two points over here. It goes to pin six there of the EBF89. So let's look at pin six of the EBF89. Three point oh four eight K. Now that sounds good because that means, if we go back to the schematic, 
and let's start painting in. What have we got? We've checked this from here to there to there to there around that coil which has got a bit of resistance, DC resistance, around that coil or through that coil with a little bit of DC resistance down to here through a 3K. In other words, that excess that we've measured is the resistance of those coils. It gets to here and then we've got to paint it all the way home. And home is to here and all the way to there. So we've checked that. We can carry on. We've got something else here. We've got this thing comes to here and it goes through a switch there. T5. That switch there, T5, it goes from there through T5 and it goes up here and it goes through a 160k resistor to what is that? Pin 1? Pin 1 of the EBF39. Now, what is T5? What is T5? Let's look down here at the switch diagram. And T5 is over here. T1, 2, 3. T4 to 6. Okay, there we go. It's in the pickup. So if you activate the pickup, it'll activate or deactivate T5. You see there? It says 4 to 6. So let's go back there. So we want to check that line. So we'll go to pin 1 over there of the EBF89. So pin 1. And we're getting nothing, but we can activate the pickup. Now, which one is the pickup? The pickup is the third one, which is over here. It's actually activated. So if we're getting nothing there at the moment, let's see, back to pin one. See if I can free my hands a bit. We're getting nothing, but if we activate something else, we've got 166K. What are we supposed to have? Well, we're supposed to have 160K so 166k, let's go back to the schematic. That looks pretty good to me. That's in spec, which means we've tested two things here. We've tested this switch, which we know works. And we've tested this continuity path to there and to that grid two. It also goes somewhere else. Let's see if we can check it from the same point. It goes up here, up here along here and it goes to five of the magic eye so we can actually check that and we should get well zero resistance right so let me try and get hold of the magic eye let's see if i can get this where i can actually see it basically goes to one side of that resistor that's one meg that's coming in here there's our connection to the magic eye, and then through one meg, yeah, about that. So those connections to the magic eye can also be painted in, back to the schematic. So we can take it from here, to there, to there, to there, to there, and to there. Right, and this one meg is also there, although there are two of them. I won't um, put in those resistors just yet because I'm not quite sure which one I've measured. But the important thing is my B plus is arriving there. I can then test these resistors by knowing the B from there, from five, it should go to those two with one meg, but that can be done later. And we also know that um, the magic eye is only going to get B plus, that one there, when we have activated something other than our pickup, our tape input or our gramophone input, okay? Which makes sense, right? But let's carry on. We've come along here, we've come along here, we've got to there, we've followed those deviations up. Uh, there's another thing here. There's another line that goes down here from that point all the way down, down, down. And this is coming to that, um, that uh, automatic control. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm more interested in the 
positive uh, supply line. So we get it from here, goes along here into a 3K resistor, up that 3K resistor, through that coil, through that coil, and it goes to the pin 7 of the EF89. So we look for the EF89, which I think is that one, and I think it's that one. 3.1K, perfect. That tells us that from there, up there, up there, through that coil, which has some resistance, through that coil, which is some resistance, and we can carry on through a 3K resistor. Remember, we had 3K something, which is 3K plus that small resistance. That line has got perfect continuity, or it seems to be fine. But we carry on. Okay, never give up. It goes from here, goes to there, through a 100K resistor, and that deviates to two directions. Let's follow up here. So it goes through a 100K resistor and then an 80K resistor to pin 8 of the EF89. So we should get 180K at pin 8, more or less 180K at pin 8. Why am I getting 80K? Oh, okay. I'm getting 80K because this thing is switched on. You see that same point comes along here, up here, into this switch, which is U4. U is the FM switch, and that shorts out that resistor if it's in that direction, okay? So I should measure either 80K, which is that resistor only, or 180K, depending on that switch. So we'll do that. Let's put this at pin, what did I say it was? Pin 8. And I'm measuring 80K, so that's fine. And my FM switch is, I believe, that one. It's charging a resistor. And this will go on for a while. There's obviously a bigger cap, biggish cap over there. And this should stop, stop near 180. So we can now go back. We've got another line to paint, uh, which is this one here. Actually, we've got two lines to paint. This one. here to there but we can also paint this one here as far as it goes through that switch so that connection there has been checked as well isn't that great pin one to ground if I can find pin one it's charging up there are capacitors there, so it's going up. Yeah, that looks like it'll be stopping at about 50. So that resistor to ground is fine. And then I can check it to B3 plus and get, uh, we got that, the effect of that resistor as well. But it's going up and it should go up to about 30k. I'm confident enough to say that that line going back to the schematic can be painted in. Which is that guy there. There. And also that one there. So what else have we got? Well, we've done that, we've done that. We've got, oh, we've got to follow that line there. And that line there takes us to, okay, this is going now into the, the ECH81, yeah. That line goes from there to there. It's got uh, 3K up here, through those two coils again, up here, down here, along here to pin 6 of the ECH81. Pin 6 of the ECH81. Let's see if we can get that. 6 is that guy there. Yeah, 2 point something going up to 3K. Perfect. If I had a great um, discrepancy, 
I would check every resistor in that path, but what the experience on this particular radio is telling me is that the resistors are actually proving to be fairly accurate. Remember, these are sort of 20% resistors, most of them, and the accuracy is coming out brilliantly. So that goes back to there. And we've got another switch over here. 5K, what is that U? And that's going to come to 8. Uh, maybe we might be able to measure that. 5K, oh, there's a big capacitor there. 5K plus 30K to 8. Let's see. Let's see if we can get that. I'm getting 130K. Why am I getting 130K? I think I'm getting, yeah, you see, I'm getting that line there, that line there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Just checked. I'm getting that. One thirty k is that guy there going up along here, through that switch, plus five k. Plus, it's going over the top there. This hundred k. I think that's what it's doing, because this thing is in the, mean, in the meantime. This thing switched off. I think that's right. I'll recheck it. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm painting all these in. And if we start going out here, you start seeing that this thing starts getting green with envy. And that's literally what it takes to start measuring these uh, continuity lines and the supply lines. And there's a lot more to do. I mean, I've only done, I've only done B3+, plus, which is over here. Now there's B2 and there's B1. So there's a lot of checking to do, and that's what I'll do next, and I'll show you the result when I get to the end of it. And so, my friends, we come to this. As you can see, there's been quite a lot painted in. We can follow all the lines up and see where they go. This first B+, B1+, really only goes to this control circuit here. This is the one that does the automatic. So I did follow it a little bit of the way through, but because I'm leaving that till the end, I haven't bothered too much with it. I've marked in those components that I changed originally. I also went back and checked all the heater wires, heater supplies on all the tubes at the pins of the tube. So one of them's got to be connected to ground. The other one was connected to the heater. Um, I actually did check this cap. It's there. It's fine. That cap. So these, uh, this line's complete. And if we look up here, we've got quite a bit done, quite a bit done. This tube is actually supplied from one of those lines that I hadn't followed through there. It's a B3 plus as well. The B2 plus only comes to here and a bit of the um, control circuitry for the automatic, but it mainly supplies the uh, power tube. So yeah, as we can see, there's a lot done. I did check those resistors up there. They are definitely one meg from five to three and six. Some of the switching action is confirmed now. Switches like that one, and um, which is the other one? This one here and that one there, they all work. This uh, line to the FM block at the front, the two tubes are separate in this case. You can check two of those lines to pins uh, one of those tubes, and they'll go through coils as well. So there's a bit of resistance there, and then you've got a 10K here and a 10K there. So. Overall, I'm very, very happy with what has been achieved here. There's, there's quite a lot done. So what's next? Well, next is this over here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check all the components around the power tube, around the preamp tube, and then this is what I'm focusing on. This is the uh, input of the uh, external um, source tape or phono, and I'm going to follow that through, and I'm going to do this whole section here um, to get the audio, all the audio section working. So that'll be the next stage. I'm going to sign off for now. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.